Alright guys, what's going on and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield video and today we're going to be talking about the top 5 hardest Pokemon to obtain in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now I made a video about this topic right around when Pokemon Sun and Moon was released and that video was really really well received, so I figured we'd make another one. Recently I wrapped up my first playthrough of the game and honestly Pokemon Sword and Shield were amazing. I love them. Now that I'm done with the story, it's time to actually complete the Pokedex and go for the shiny charm and post game stuff like that. But one thing I've noticed in this game is that there are a lot of Pokemon that are not so easy to find and pretty rare. So I figured I'd make a video talking about some of the rare Pokemon and where to find them to hopefully help out some of you guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you go ahead and drop a like down below. Of course, your support is greatly appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more Pokemon Sword and Shield content. All right, but with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into number five on the list. Number 5 on the list is going to be the new Pokemon Surfetched. Now the first difficulty with getting Surfetched as a Pokemon comes with actually finding its pre-evolution, Farfetch. As you guys may know, Galarian, Farfetch, and Surfetched are exclusives to Pokemon Sword, so if you have Pokemon Shield, you're already out of luck. But if you do have Pokemon Sword and want to go ahead and get yourself a Surfetched, it is a little bit difficult. Starting off, Farfetch is a 5% encounter on Route 5 and the Giant's Mirror. So already you're working with 5% odds of getting the pre-evolution only. And once you find your Galarian Farfetch'd and hopefully catch it, evolving this Pokemon is not so easy. It's not that this Pokemon's evolution method is hard, it's just that it could be a little bit tricky because it's all up to RNG. Galarian Farfetch'd evolves by getting three crits in one singular Pokemon battle. The Pokemon doesn't even need to level up, it's just, it has to get three crits. Right off the bat this already seems kind of undoable, but if you go ahead and give your Galarian Farfetch'd focus energy, you should be able to do this rather quickly. Hopefully. I mean, I caught this Pokemon and wanted to evolve it day one, and by then no one really knew how to evolve it, so I was struggling trying to figure out the method. I remember people in my chat were telling me that the Pokemon had to kill three opposing Pokemon in one battle, and that just seemed ridiculous. But honestly, after figuring out that getting three crits was the correct evolution method, I kinda wish it was just three kills in one battle. In my playthrough, I ended up evolving Galarian Farfetch on the first battle I tried this on. Focus Energy actually works like a charm, so you may get lucky However, some people were not. So yeah, if luck is on your side for this evolution, getting Surfetch shouldn't actually be that hard if you're in Pokemon Sword. If you're in Pokemon Shield, just find someone to trade it and hopefully that'll work out. Number 4 on the list is actually going to be two Pokemon, and that's Ice-Q and Stondroner. The reason both of these Pokemon are taking up the same spot is because they're actually interchangeable for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. If you're playing Pokemon Sword, you can encounter a Stondroner on Route 10. And same thing for Ice-Q and Pokemon Shield. But the only catch is that both of these Pokemon's encounter rate is 2%. I think it's also important for me to mention that these aren't overworld encounters, meaning that you actually have to run into the Pokemon in the grass. At least if they were 2% overworld encounters, you could sit there and just wait for one of them to show up. But individually encountering every single Pokemon until you find one of these is just not that easy. Well, I guess I should say time consuming rather than easy, but you know what I mean. I actually had the chance to use an Ice Q on my team in my first playthrough of Pokemon Sword and Shield, and I loved using the Pokemon. Some people get thrown off by the fact that it doesn't evolve, and same thing with Stondroner, but honestly, I really recommend giving these Pokemon a shot. Next up on the list, we have Duraludon. First off, I do want to say that this is one of my favorite new Pokemon that was introduced, so it kind of pains me that this Pokemon is so rare to find. However, thankfully in my playthrough, I randomly just came across it. I don't even know how. I wasn't even looking for it either, so I lucked out there, but it might not be the same for you. You can find Duraludon at two separate areas of the game outside of max raid battles on Route 10 and the Lake of Outrage. However, if you want to search for this Pokemon on Route 10, it's a 1% encounter rate. At least at the Lake of Outrage, it's a 2% encounter rate, but you can only find this Pokemon in the snowstorm weather. Duraludon also has a Gigantamax evolution that's also pretty hard to catch. I think there may be a way to control the weather in this game, but I'm not sure. So whenever I've been searching for Pokemon that only appear in certain weather conditions, it's been really annoying trying to find the appropriate weather. So if you walk into the Lake of Outrage and it's just randomly snowing, I highly recommend you get yourself a Duraludon if you don't already have one.
Number two on the list is going to be Delmize, who is actually the only non-Galar Pokemon to be featured in this video. Honestly, I have no idea why they make Delmize so rare, and it's also not available in the water as well. Delmize can only be found in the game on Route 9, and it's a 1% encounter. 1%. This seems like such a weird Pokemon to just make super rare. Like, Duraludon, I can make sense of that. It's a dragon Pokemon. It's big. I don't know what makes sense. But Delmize is just... It's Delmize. It's not too good. It's not too bad. It's just kind of there. <laughs> I don't know how many people out there want to use a Delmize in their first playthrough of Pokemon Sword and Shield, but if you do, that's where you get it. Actually, I do want to add that I have used this Pokemon in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and it does hit like a truck in a playthrough. I'm not saying go ahead and take Delmize on Battle Spot or VGC, something like that, but if you do want a fun Pokemon to use in a playthrough, why not use a Delmize? All right, before we get into number one on this list, I do want to go over a few honorable mentions. The reason for this is that there's actually a lot of 1% encounter rate Pokemon in this game, so including them all in a top five would be impossible. Even ordering them was hard. So we'll just kind of like fire through these Pokemon real quick and then we'll get right into the number one spot. First honorable mention is going to be Flygon and it's a 1% encounter rate at the Lake of Outrage. This is actually the same thing for Gardevoir too, so they're pretty much at the same rarity. Another new Galar Pokemon that's actually really, really rare is Sizzlepeed. Sizzlepeed can be found on Route 3 very early on in the game. However, it's a 1% encounter rate. But the reason I decided to leave this Pokemon off the list is because you can actually get a Sizzlepeed for 100% encounter rate at the Moto Stoke Gym. So yeah, since it's a 100% encounter rate, I kind of felt like it didn't really deserve to make the list, but thought I'd mention it nevertheless. Next, we have Rotom, who is also a 2% encounter rate at the Lake of Outrage. And last but not least for the honorable mentions, we have Pincarchin, who is only available on Route 9 at a 5% encounter rate. All right, so that's gonna do it for the honorable mentions. So let's go ahead and get into the number one spot of the top five hardest Pokemon to obtain in Pokemon Sword and Shield. In the number one spot, we have a Pokemon that you may have guessed, and this Pokemon is Dragapult. The first step to getting this Pokemon would be finding its pre-evolutions being Dreepy or Dracloak. Both of these Pokemon can be found at the Lake of Outrage at either a 1% or 2% encounter rate, depending on the weather. And once you finally track down either Dreepy or Dracloak, evolving these Pokemon is just not easy at all. First of all, Dreepy evolves at level 50, so depending on whatever level you catch it at, you gotta level it up to 50 before it can even evolve into its first stage evolution. And once Dreepy evolves into Dracloak, you got a whole nother 10 levels before you evolve into Dragapult at level 60. It does make sense to me that a Pokemon this good should be hard to get, but jeez, it's really hard. Also, if you plan on using a Dragapult on your team in Pokemon Sword and Shield, you gotta wait until way late game, because that's the only time you can get it. Not only do you have to wait for the bike upgrade so you can bike on the water, but you also have to wait until the level of the Dreepy or Dracloak is a low enough level for you to catch. But honestly, the struggle of getting a Dragapult is all worth it in the end. This is one of my favorite Pokemon to be introduced in these games, and I loved using it in my first playthrough of Sword and Shield. All right, well, that's gonna do it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, please make sure you drop a like down below. Of course, the support is greatly appreciated, and also make sure you subscribe for more Pokemon Sword and Shield content. If there's a Pokemon you think I missed in this video, make sure you leave it in the comments below. Let me know, what is your personal top five? What do you think are the hardest Pokemon to get in this game? Thanks again so much for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.